I did actually uh, last week completely out of the blue I went to meet up with a guy who had a record for me that I went to meet him and he had this little tatty carrier bag and it was just amazing records with him so that was all spare so I ended up buying quite a lot of them I had to go to cash point plus I went digging after I met him and then I went digging the next day as well I it's you know it's uh, it's quite a full-time thing what's going on people this is DJ mr. thing representing extended players and right now you're watching crate diggers Music for me came from my mum. My mum was really into Motown, soul music, uh, and she had some reggae as well. When we were out in the car, when we were young, it was always Stevie Wonder, Marvin Gaye, George Benson, and on and on, but loads of Motown Supremes. I think my mum probably played that George, the George Benson Give Me The Night album all the time. That and um, Talking Book, Stevie Wonder. They were, the, they were probably the earliest things like that that I really heard. Then when I started going through her records, she actually, had a lot more than she was playing in the car like she had Al Green and I really liked Al Green so yeah I just went from there really. <laughs> this is nothing special rare wise but this is like one of the first things that I found that was just packed full of samples and breaks. This I'm talking Seven Oaks Town Market Hall on a Friday lunchtime little little guy with a box of records I didn't really know what I was looking for and I bought an Al Green album because my mum had Al Green records and got it home and it was just breaks and I was and uh, you know quite a lot of famous samples on here so I've never ever upgraded this copy this is absolutely trashed it's really really crackly and obliterated but I've just kept it I've never never kept a clean one <laughs> it's just uh, sentimental to me I think one of my uncles took me to London to buy records. This was probably in about 86 or 87. And that was that, it snowballed. It really snowballed from there for me. Like I, I started doing that every month. I remember going into my parents and being excited that I had 30 records. I've got 30 records. It just kind of snowballed. I just basically wanted everything that, by people that I liked. And, I, and then when I got into looking for samples and stuff, it just became, oh, I've got to have everything. I've got to have what, I, what I'm looking for now. <laughs> I think ballpark, I think it's probably about 30,000 or so. There's boxes and boxes, there's about 20 odd boxes of 45s in there that holds, I think, 150 or so to start. And then there's these, and then like I say, there's a whole wall, which is stuff that I haven't really sorted. And it's also a lot of 12 inch singles that I haven't uh, kind of really properly ever sorted through. So <laughs> there's a lot of everything at home. And there's also a lot of, um, there's a lot of soundtrack LPs at home that I haven't got room for here. And yeah, there's a lot of stuff. This is all basically A to Z. All of this, this whole area here, this is all um, soul, jazz, funk, rock, general breaks and samples. And that goes all the way there, <laughs> all the way around. Um, and it kind of ends up around here. And then down the bottom here is um, soundtracks, more soundtracks, ultimate breaks and beats, the cornerstone of any DJ's collection. This whole shelf here is all stuff that I've done, featured on or produced. Here, here and here and all of this. This is all hip hop 12 inches. This is just random stuff here that I'm, actually these are doubles and stuff. This is some stuff I picked up a couple of weeks ago that I'm just, I've got here to go through and listen to. This is my little den where my decks and everything are, my, 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 minim, my very minimal setup of equipment. But in here, I've got more records obviously, uh, these are all, these ones here are all disco 12s. All these boxes are all got 45s in. So all of these boxes behind the chair, all of these under here, there's more in here and here. They're all 45s in there. This shirt, this wall here is all of these library records up the top. And then up to here onwards all the way to the floor. These are all hip hop LPs. This down here is the record that really strengthened my that I was going to be into hip hop this is this is the one sucker mcs when i heard sucker mcs for the first time changed changed it for me you know this is what i i knew this was what i wanted to do i wanted i wanted to hear music like this i wanted to hear and be involved in music like this it was a big moment for me hearing that for the first time i think i heard this when i was 12 or 13 the local youth club had decks so we we used to go to the youth club every tuesday with whatever new records we'd got and we'd go and practice up at the youth club. 
I remember just girls complaining because we weren't playing like top 40 pop records and we were just playing, you know, ultra magnetic MCs and things like that. We used to jam jam matchsticks into the uh, on the amplifier. We we always used to get amps that had push button phono or tape input, so we jam one of them. So then you could use it as a transformer switch. So you could like kind of copy transformer scratching with it. <laughs> but just destroyed so many records. Like didn't have a really have a clue about slip mats or we were just making it up as we went along. And I kind of learned from there, took everything on board that I kind of that I'd learned. And then when I actually started DJing and especially when I started DJing on proper equipment, it was it felt quite natural. And then I did my first gig in about 89. I was so happy because people didn't complain. People that I knew from the town that I'd previously never spoken to, they were coming to speak to me and it was very strange, but a nice feeling. So it was a good way to start. <laughs> this is amazing records. A shout out to Napa for giving me this record. Mukti, it's amazing. Really good uh, Indian soundtrack record. Basically what you're looking for on the Indian records is anything that's called dance music. Because <laughs> that's generally an instrumental kind of theme. But this one, it's like none other that I've ever heard. It starts off as a like kind of almost bossa nova kind of thing. And then it ends up sounding like what I can only describe as Portishead at the end. And then goes into super happy, up-tempo Brazilian thing again. It's absolutely crazy. I've never heard anything like it. Uh, and this one is a really good one as well. Dharmatma, it's really killer. It's a big sample. I'm not gonna blow it up too much, but it's very, very good. This is as crazy as its cover would suggest. Vampires of Dartmoor. This was something that I knew about that I'd been looking for. And I bought this a, a long, long time ago. But at the time I, I was looking for it, it was already going for maybe 300 pounds then. Um, and I was in a shop uh, in Croydon, which isn't far from here. And I was in there and I saw it on a wall and I was like, nah, it can't be right. I looked at it, when I looked at it and I couldn't see the price, but it, it was super, super cheap and the guy had really messed up. And this is a guy that really has everything priced way through the roof in the shop. So I'm sorry, but you, you slipped up. This is a great record. It's absolutely mad and very rare and very good. <laughs> <laughs> It was wrong. <laughs> no, I, I think probably the, the most I've ever spent was about was about three hundred. It's an Italian soundtrack, but a Japanese issue of it, and it's crazy. It's something I've been looking for for twelve years or so. I just wanted it for so long, and, I, and like I say, the cover and everything. That's what I like about records is the covers. I like to read about it. And it's a soundtrack to a film, so I even went and found the film online and watched the, it's like a shark documentary. It's the most health and safety nightmare I've ever seen. These are sharks and men. So thank you, Marcellus Wallace, for helping me to get this record. The cover is pretty much an indication of what the record is like. You see this guy with the legs hanging off? That happens, that actually happens. And it's just terrifying, but the music is insane. It's like hip hop and very dark, very gloomy kind of underwater music, but just with beats. Amazing record. This was um, top of my wants list for a great many years. All my, any of my friends will tell you that I had them all looking for this for me. It's like British jazz. It's like a lot of library musicians playing on it, writing the songs on it, a lot of cover versions too. Um, an ex-girlfriend of mine who was, I was with at the time, she laughed because she knew how much I'd been looking for it. And when I played it to her, she thought it was hilarious that it was just cover version. I was wanted this record for so long for cover versions, but it's actually the original songs on it that are what really makes it. It was in Melbourne last year or the year before, I can't remember. Anyway, used to find endless copies of this record, which is, uh, which is a great, great break. Really good um, steel band version of um, Santana. But I knew they had another album. And this is the other album. Uh, this has got the version of Ripple. I don't know what it is, but it sure is funky. It's got 90% of Me As You. It's got The World Is A Ghetto. I had been actively looking for this for a while and just never found it. And I even had a conversation with a guy, with, uh, with e this guy Ethan, Northside Records about it. And he said that he'd never seen it. And I literally found it the next day, a block away from, from where we were for $2 in a, in a, in a bargain bin. 
in Melbourne. Fantastic record. I did a show in, in Bath, which is in the southwest, near to, near to Bristol. And there used to be a really, really great record shop there. It's not there now, but um, was in there. It was a big store. They had a lot of records. I'd already bought a lot of records and it was good. And then I started going through this crate and there was all these really nice, really good library albums that I'd never seen. And I was pulling them out and the guy goes, oh, you looking for those? I got some more of those. And I was like, what do you mean you got some more of those? And um, I was thinking, you know, going to be some 80s horrificness or something. But anyway, he goes, no, come downstairs. So he, then he opens this iron gate and there's a whole cellar of the shop was like organized into crates, all the different library labels. So uh, there was a whole big crate of Bosworths, there's a whole crate, crates of chapels, there was crates and crates of dwarfs. And there was multiple copies of these things and was there for a good, good four or five hours. And it was insane and um, yeah, really good, really amazing stuff. I dread to think what I left. This is Feelings on Conroy. Um, a very rare Italian record. Massive, massive breaks on it. Really incredible music all the way through, but this I got for five pounds. It's amazing, it's absolutely amazing. This is another good one that came from the same stash, Sven Liebeck. It's a really good record. This was, uh, this was a good, uh, good charity shop find. I've never seen it before. It's a South African record. But basically, this is a this is this is also on a Boozy and Hawks library record, but it's um, it's really killer library kind of funk. Really, it's more like soundtrack record. I've never seen it before. I don't really know anyone that has it. But literally, just randomly in a box of Mantovani LPs was was this. There's a little tiny tiny spot that I don't take anyone to. That I grew up in the town where I grew up. The first day that we went to this guy's place, my friend rung me and he goes. There's a record shop opened in your town. I'm like, what are you talking about? I've been, I would know if a record shop opened up here. So we went up there, um, and the first day we we were getting, he had meters albums, he had like a bunch of bunch of really good stuff, and it was all like three pounds. He didn't know what these things were. He didn't know what anything was. But he had all the rock stuff all kind of priced up accordingly. But anything, any of the soul or funk stuff, he or the jazz, he had no idea. And um, we just cleaned up, and I, and I basically that just went on for a good. I mean, I've been going there for 20, 25 years now. Some of the rarest records I've had have come out of that place, and and they've been pence. This is this is an absolutely fantastic record. I got this in Brussels when I was there on tour with um, DJ Vadim. We went out digging. I actually got this and a placebo album, and the Planet Sauvage, the French soundtrack. All, all in the same shop on the same day. It was a good day. Um, but this is absolutely killer. Mark, Mark Mulan, he's writer and producer for Placebo. He's got a track that starts off with just dripping water and then comes in with just drums underneath it and it's just there. But it's amazing. The whole thing is amazing. The whole record is amazing. I love it. <laughs> this is pretty out there. Bat battered ornaments. It's got a US release as well, but it's pretty rare because it's on, it's on Harvest. But I, I don't even know how to describe it. It's basically really tripped out prog, but it's got a killer track on it called Crossword and the Safety Pins, I think. And it just basically sounds like Get Out My Life Woman mixed with prog rock. It's absolutely bonkers. Very, very, very rare, especially over here. I love the packaging. I like how it feels. I like how it sounds. I like a great many things about vinyl. I find MP3s quite impersonal. They don't really, it's like, whereas, you know, having something I can look at while I'm, re while I'm listening to it and everything, and, you know, learn more about other music, you know, is, is great. You know, if you look at the back of the jazz records, it's got who played on it, so then you go out and look for those people. And I just like that kind of, getting that kind of knowledge from, from a record, you don't get that from, from a digital, generally. That's what I really like about them. It's something that nobody knows that I did. Here's a Coldplay 12 inch promo <laughs> with, with some scratching on by me. Um, it's a remix that Chris Martin's brother did. And his, his brother is friends with a friend of mine. He rung me up and was like, I'm doing this remix for Coldplay. Do you want to do some scratching? I said, yeah, sure. So I got on a Coldplay record somehow. <laughs>